I know, Mr. Chairman, you've gotten already lots of very specific questions, and I've heard a couple of them on, on Basel III. So I'm just going to make a, an illustration, and you can comment on it if you'd like. Um, um, but there's a, a large generation and, and uh, transmission utility in North Dakota, rural electric cooperative, basin electric, very large g and um, members all over the, the upper Midwest. And um, they recently uh, testified in front of the CFTC on Basel III, and they, they expressed a concern uh, about um, how, how operations would be impacted if lending was curtailed or limited in any way. And they gave a real world example, and I want to uh, just give you that example. Now, remember, this is an electricity supply that we're talking about. It's, it's critical it remains reliable. It's critical that it remains affordable. And part of an electric cooperative's risk management program, of course, is, is how it buys the fuel that generates the electricity, in this case, natural gas. They, they, they'll, they may buy natural gas in advance at a fixed price, realizing natural gas is one of those commodities that goes up and, up and down in pretty big swings at times. But, but they, they can hedge by buying it at a fixed price for a power plant. And it protects the cooperative financially since electricity prices, uh, again, follow those spot prices generally. So if spot prices spike, so do electricity prices. However, with a natural gas hedge, the cooperative can generate electricity at a lower fixed fuel cost, protecting itself and its consumers from high prices. It's, a, it's an up, upfront cost on the balance sheet between the cooperative and its bank, but it protects the reliability and affordable supply of electricity. I give you that very specific example, not to even to mention that the cooperative model itself has, has some unique qualities about it. If you would like to comment on it, I, you've already stated that there are going to have to be changes. I just throw that into your, you know, your, your box of things to think about, and you're welcome to comment if you'd like. I'll just say we're well aware of that issue, and I appreciate you bringing it up. Th thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. With that, then, I just, um, I'm just going to speak to this independence issue. I, I think that the senators that have questioned you on it are correct. I share that concern, as you know, that the, the independence of the Fed is essential. I have resisted um, moves within my own party to change it. Um, but those moves are very narrow and not very, I don't think, very realistic. And I th appreciate you pointing out that from what you can tell, at least on Capitol Hill, we're all pretty much united on that front. Perception does matter. It matters a great deal. And you and I have had discussions over the years on you were very... Um, you admonished us strongly as Congress to spend what we needed to spend to get through the pandemic and to maintain the economy. Uh, I, I think you were right to do that. Um, you, were, you were just as aggressive in not responding to, to calls to, to rein it in a little bit when Democrats brought the, uh, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act and the American Rescue Plan um, to the forefront. And I think really basically hijack the economy and, and put fuel on inflation. Um, but perception matters, and so I would just submit to you, and you haven't said you're going to do this, I don't have any reason to believe you'll do this, but, but any, any move um, to lower interest rates or move interest rates either direction before November 5th could certainly be a bad perception, even if there's, um, even if there's a strong um, push to do that. I know you understand that, but I just want you to know that as long as you remain independent, I'll have I'll be on your side. I think neutral is a good place to be. And by the way, you have one of those jobs where being boring is one of the most noble things you can be. So great job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.